Hello, Douglas County citizens, and welcome to another COVID-19 update. I'm Lena Hardy, and today I'm speaking with the Director of Cobb and Douglas Public Health, Dr. Janet Meemark. Dr. Meemark, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me today. I appreciate it. So unfortunately, COVID-19 is still very present in the Douglas County community and in the state of Georgia. Could you please provide us with the most recent numbers for our area and what's the status of Wellstar Douglas? Yeah, so um, currently um, we have over 10,000 um, PCR cases, that's 10,223. Um, but when you put those antigens in there, remember we do have to count those as well. We have over 2,312 of those as well. And so um, without, with just the PCR rate, we're looking at a rate of 611 cases per 100,000. And I'm sure that is over 700 when you put in the antigens as well. That is still extremely high. We see it coming down a little bit, but I've been a little bit surprised that Douglas's numbers have been coming down a little slower than some of the surrounding counties. And so um, I was really happy for us to try to do this, to try to increase some awareness because um, we do wanna see those numbers keep going down. Uh, we have 160 confirmed and um, probable deaths right now, and that includes the antigens. So um, we've um, lost um, quite a few people to, to COVID. Uh, the one good thing is that we do see hospitalizations improving. So that is some really good news because um, Douglas Hospital has had um, some high numbers of COVID patients for quite a while, and so they have seen some improvement as of late. So that's some good news. We need some good news, don't we? Yes, we definitely do. <laughs> so tell me, what about the COVID-19 variant? Is it more severe? Yeah, so um, there are some different reports that are coming out right now. So what we do know is that the, the variant that we have here in our state and in our district, including Douglas County, is the B117 variant, which is the United Kingdom variant. Um, what we note about that one is that it can be 30 to 70 percent more contagious than the um, COVID-19 one that we have now, the virus we have now. And there is some thought that it is up to 30 percent more deadly than the one we have now. And the CDC is reviewing that, but there is one study that's showing that, um, that it is more deadly. That is of concern because, um, first of all, the doubling time for that variant is thought to be 10 days. So, you know, we have a few cases now in 10 days that would double and then continue to double and double if nothing is done, right? So the beauty of this mm -hmm. is that we're coming off of this surge from the holidays, but the kind of concerning thing is that we have this variant in the background that can continue to double if we let our guard down. And on top of that, we're trying to get the vaccine out as soon as possible. And so we are kind of fighting against all of these things to uh, make sure that we um, come out on top here. Right. With this new variant, should we be wearing two masks? I know that I read a report a few days ago and I, I started recently wearing two masks, but am I overdoing it? <laughs> That's a great question. That's a really good question. So the most important thing that the CDC has said yesterday is making sure that you have a good fitting mask. So making sure you have the, the metal nose wire in there, and then it has to be multiple layers. So multiple cloth layers, multiple whatever layers you have, it you know has to be multiple. And then if you use whatever you can to make sure that the mask fits really well, whether it's kind of a brace or a fitting device, but it needs to be flat across, flat across your, your cheekbones and fit really well. You can, they, the studies are showing that if you do double up like you are, putting a cloth mask over a disposable mask or something like that, that it is more effective um, for decreasing transmission. Now, just be careful. Like if you can't breathe, then, then you know, that's going to be a problem. So make sure you can continue to breathe well with this. But it is shown to be more effective. But I think um, being making sure that your mask fits well goes a really long way. Mm hmm and I've also read that the new CDC guidelines are stating that fully vaccinated individuals who meet certain criteria no longer have to quarantine. Is that true? 
Yeah, so let's get into that a little bit. So remember that people, um, that we don't know all of the information and research about this vaccine yet, right? It came out quickly. And so the longer term stuff is not quite out. So what they are comfortable with doing right now is up to three months. So if you are fully vaccinated, which means that you had at least two weeks after that second dose, if it's a second two dose series, and it's within three months, of that second dose and you, you remain without any symptoms that you can go without a mask. So that only gives you 90 days. And so what they're doing is kind of looking at natural immunity and, um, and uh, comparing that to the immunity with the vaccine. Now, this is still fairly early. I imagine in the next few months, if they find out that it, you know, is conferring more immunity, they may adjust those guidelines because like we said, it's a, it's a safe vaccine, but it's a fairly new vaccine. So no, new research comes out every day. What's also good, I just want to make sure everybody knows too, that if you are vaccinated, that it is good against that UK uh, 117 variant. So that is also very good news. So, um, so you have some guidelines on those to, to look at as well. Let's just talk about the vaccines really quickly. There are two available right now, correct? Yes, we have the Moderna and Pfizer. Right. And so um, how are people, how for the state of Georgia are people able to um, get those vaccines? Yeah, so so we're still a little tight on the vaccines right now. And um, I think a lot of people hope with the change of administration that uh, the flow of uh, vaccines would come out more quickly. But um, I think what they found is that we had a, a smaller supply than, than we realized. And so they don't anticipate that the vaccine um, supply will really dramatically increase for another month or two. And so um, you can continue to look on the vaccine finder from DPH, Georgia TPH, and then it'll show you different places. So um, there are multiple places that, um, you know, within the metro that you can get the vaccine and sign up for. Now, um, what we know for us is that um, we have our location over at the health department right now, and, and bless their hearts, they've been outside in the rain the entire time and vac vaccinating folks. And so um, they've concentrated right now mostly on second vaccines, but we've received a small number of first vaccines this week that we will be um, working with the senior center to get our most vulnerable vaccinated. Um, there's a lot of folks that um, weren't able to get the, the first round of vaccines on the internet because they actually didn't have good internet or good, you know, um, um, smartphones or anything. They weren't able to sign up. And so the Senior Center has been awesome about helping us to find folks to um, get them signed up and they help them with the whole process, which is really great. Um, and so we are um, getting them signed up for the small amount of vaccines. And then on uh, next, um, I think Wednesday is when we're moving to Arbor Place Mall. We're really excited because we're going to have a nice big site out there and all the stuff is coming in and uh, they anticipate being able to do, as long as the vaccines come in, at least 800 uh, vaccines a day, as long as our supplies um, are um, increased. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so is there anything else you would like to tell the residents of Douglas County today? Yeah, so um, one thing is that we do have the Johnson & Johnson vaccine that has applied for emergency use authorization. They meet with the FDA on the 26th of February. If um, it goes the same way as the other two vaccines, we expect that they will, that will come out very soon after. Um, what I wanted to um, kind of let people know is, so yeah, there, you know, when you look at the efficacy rates of that vaccine, it's 72%. Um, and some people might be concerned about that. But, um, you know, first of all, it was done at a different time than the Moderna and the um, AstraZeneca vaccine. So we've had a huge surge going on, right? So that's one thing. But also, it's shown to have 100% um, effectiveness against hospitalizations and deaths and critical care at 28 days. That's huge. So it's really protecting against severe illness. And so, and it's a one shot, you're done vaccine. And so that's what's really nice about that one. Um, so we anticipate that one coming hopefully at the end of the month, we'll see that. Um, but I wanted everybody to please, Continue. I know. I know this is really hard, but there's a light at this end of the at the end of this tunnel, and we see it. But if we let down our guard, we're just going to delay it even further. We got to give time for the vaccines to be rolled out, and we got to keep this variant at bay. We have to. We got to continue to wear our mask and to distance and um, you know wash our hands. But 
please, please do not gather. It is these small gatherings that this um, virus is spreading in. And this variant is no joke. If it spreads faster and could be deadlier, then we have a, probably our hardest battle ahead of us. So please, let's let's keep going. There is a light there. Let's just all push together to, to get to it. Yes, we are in this together. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, Dr. Meemark, for speaking with me and, and providing valuable information to Douglas County citizens. And thank you, Douglas County citizens, for watching.